WHO official suggests removing your sick family members to dignified isolation. Trump blames the World Health Organization for being too China-centric. But the WHO says the real problem is that Taiwan is racist. That and more on this week's China News Headline. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The UK is saying millions of coronavirus test kits they bought from China don't work. And Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in intensive care for the coronavirus. So it's not that surprising that Britain is falling out of love with China. After all, the reason the world is in this mess is because the Chinese Communist Party tried to cover up the coronavirus, which made it spread worse. That's why I'm calling it the CCP virus. In case you don't know how bad this mess is, take a listen to what a World Health Organization official said on March 30th. In most parts of the world, <clears throat> due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. Yes, authorities should remove people from their homes in a safe and dignified manner, like they do in China. I mean, the World Health Organization has repeatedly praised China's response to the coronavirus epidemic, but the idea that a WHO official is suggesting that authorities should go into your home and take family members away? That kind of sums up my 2020 experience. Here's me at the beginning of 2020. Oh boy, 2020 is going to be great. And me now. The United Nations is setting up a one world government with the Chinese Communist Party at the helm. Wake up, sheeple. Fortunately, the WHO and the UN do not have authority to go into your homes here in America or anywhere really, even in China, because China has its own people to do it. But if you've been watching the show for the last few months, you know I've repeatedly called out the World Health Organization for massive corruption. Check out my recent episode about the head of the World Health Organization, should WHO head resign over coronavirus cover-up. Even though the WHO may not have the power to separate us from our families, it is still kind of worrying that a WHO official would make that kind of a suggestion, and even more worrying, that it barely made headlines. What is making headlines is President Trump calling the WHO very China-centric. The uh, WHO, that's the World Health Organization, receives vast amounts of money from the United States, and uh, we pay for a majority, the biggest portion of their money. And they uh, actually criticized and disagreed with my travel ban at the time I did it. And they were wrong. They've been wrong about a lot of things. And they had a lot of information early, and they didn't want to do very — they seemed to be very China-centric. To be fair, considering how much Trump talks about China, one could argue that he's very China-centric, too. But the WHO flat out rejects Trump's claim. Hey, did you know that Taiwan warned the WHO back in December that the coronavirus could be human to human transmissible? But the WHO didn't tell anyone. Maybe because they sided with China politically and ignored Taiwan's warnings. Anyway, Trump is now considering suspending U.S. funding to the WHO. Now some say if the U.S. pulls funding for the WHO, that means China will completely take over. Well, China already has huge influence over the current and previous heads of the WHO, and China got the current head to help them cover up the coronavirus, but okay, China has already pretty much taken over. But if the U.S. stops coughing up the money, I think WHO officials will care. The WHO routinely has spent about $200 million a year on travel expenses, more than what it doles out to fight some of the biggest problems in public health, including AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. And a lot of those travel expenses included first-class airfare and five-star hotels. 
like how in 2017, while the head of the WHO visited Africa, she stayed here in one of the most expensive hotels in Guinea. She even stayed in the presidential suite, which costs more than $1,000 a night, complete with a luxury marble bathroom. WHO officials don't want to lose that kind of lifestyle. And somehow, I don't think China will pay for it. At least, not when WHO officials are staying in Africa. But don't think the WHO is completely ignoring Taiwan. After a lot of criticism, especially from this show, the head of the WHO, Dr. Tedros, has finally acknowledged Taiwan. But since I don't have any inferiority complex when I am personally affected or attacked by racial slurs, I don't care because I am a very proud black person or Negro. I don't care being called even Negro. I am. That's what came from some quarters. And if you want me to be specific, three months ago, this attack came from Taiwan. Yes, Dr. Tedros acknowledged Taiwan by criticizing Taiwan and its government for being racist, while also providing absolutely no evidence to back it up. The government of Taiwan responded by saying, we also experience serious discrimination from the global health system. We can relate to Dr. Tedros and we condemn any form of discrimination and injustice. By the way, Dr. Tedros also said this during that press conference. We don't do politics in WHO. We don't. Right. But it's not just the UN and WHO pushing us into the warm embrace of Chinese authoritarianism. The World Economic Forum, the NGO that holds the famous Davos Summit, is praising China's version of the internet. You know, the one that is heavily censored and where authorities will come knock on your door if you post something critical of the government in a private message. Yeah, that internet. Apparently, it's been great at fighting the coronavirus. Okay, to be fair, the article isn't praising China's internet censorship. It's praising China's 5G, artificial intelligence, big data, and cloud computing, which the Chinese government then uses for internet censorship. But let's ignore that part. Look at how quickly China built those hospitals. So the World Economic Forum is gushing over China's propaganda while glossing over its horribly repressive controlled internet. And the WHO suggests the government should come into our homes and take our family members away. Take it away, Conspiracy Chris. Wake up, sheeple. Someday, Conspiracy Chris and regular Chris will merge. I wonder what that would look like. NBC News is facing a huge backlash over this tweet, comparing the coronavirus death toll in the U.S. and China, because anybody with half a brain knows not to trust numbers from China. And you know who apparently has more than half a brain and is a better source of news than NBC? The Iranian health official that called those same Chinese coronavirus stats a bitter joke. Wow, is an Iranian health official more credible than NBC News? Wait, was that Shelley? Oh. The Iranian official later backtracked on his statement, after pressure from China. I mean, how could the Chinese regime possibly be trying to cover up the death toll? One thing the Chinese Communist Party can't entirely cover up is the effect the CCP virus has had on its economy. Nearly half a million Chinese companies have gone out of business. But one business that's booming? Tourism. Here's the Huangshan Mountain Park in Anhui Province on April 4th. Those are people who really trust their government when it says there are no new coronavirus cases. But while most people are entirely focused on the coronavirus to the exclusion of anything else, the Chinese Communist Party still has the energy for other things, like intimidating its neighbors in the East and South China Sea. A Japanese destroyer was damaged after a Chinese fishing vessel rammed it. The collision left a three foot by six inch hole in the Shimakaze's port side. I don't know if that means Japanese destroyers are really weak or Chinese fishing boats are incredibly strong. They're like Chinese aunties. Don't mess with them. Meanwhile, Vietnam is protesting the actual sinking of a boat by the Chinese maritime militia. Now the Philippines is getting involved. And despite the coronavirus outbreak, 
China is keeping up with military exercises around Taiwan. And hey, guess what else the party still has time for? Human rights violations, including persecuting people who practice Falun Gong, destroying churches, and sending Uyghurs off as slave labor to restart the Chinese economy. It's nice to know that despite the CCP virus, the CCP hasn't changed. And here's another reminder that China was just appointed to an influential UN Human Rights Council panel. Boy, they're really pushing me over the edge. Next, I'll answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Since YouTube has been killing us with demonetization, the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army has stepped up. They're viewers like you who help us keep up the fight of truthful, uncensored information by supporting China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Today's question comes from Maldoon7. Chris, is it too risky for me to travel to China while being a current U.S. military member? I understand why you want to go to China. After all, that's the only place left in the world safe from the coronavirus. But I'm afraid you won't be able to flee to China, because China has temporarily banned foreigners from entering the country. Because they don't want filthy foreigners bringing the coronavirus to China. Making the rounds on WeChat this week was this fun cartoon called An Illustrated Handbook on How to Sort Foreign Trash. In this case, throwing a black man in the recycling can and then spraying him with disinfectant. I wonder how Dr. Tedros feels about that. Don't worry, they had a white character too. As for your question, Maldun7, I don't know what you do in the US military, but in general, I don't think you'll be unsafe in China if you just go as a tourist for a short amount of time, once they start letting foreigners back in. I don't really recommend it right now, though. But I am proud to have a US serviceman as a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. So, thank you for your service and your support. Now, did you know YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people from the show? Take a moment to make sure you're still subscribed. And if you're new to China Uncensored, go ahead, subscribe. I know you want to. And if you'd like to hear your question answered on the show, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by going to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.